of friends. We're back. We're talking about tension in a spring problem today. Man, for some reason, spring problems give my students fits, and I don't even know why, but, you know, if you closed your eyes and I came and I hooked a spring to your shirt, and then I come and uh, I pull on that, you have your eyes closed, what are you going to say is acting on you? You're going to be like, I feel a force pulling on me, man. You don't know it's a spring. And really and truly, all a spring problem is in statics is just a fancy way to express a force. It's just a force given in a different form. So don't be scared of those. That's easy, right? Now we do have to remember from physics some equations for the force in a spring. So let's see. Force in spring equations. What do I remember? Ah, I remember this guy. One half kx squared. I remember that. That had to do with springs, right? Yikes. Don't do that, okay? That's a no-no. That is the potential energy in a spring. We're not working. That, we'll use that in dynamics, okay? For this class, f equals k times x. That's the equation we need. What is k? k, of course, stands for constant. I know it doesn't, I can't take it. It doesn't start with a K. I don't know, why, why didn't they put a C there? C was used for something else, right? And then we got X. What is X? X is the displaced length of the spring, or let's call it the stretch in the spring, right? Stretch in spring. So it's how much the string has spread, stretched. Can't even speak right. Did I, did I stretch it? It was it started off six inches, now it's eight inch. So X would be two inches, right? It stretched two inches, okay? So that's the equation we need to go after this problem, okay? So this is, that's, that's our money right there, okay? Now what are they asking us for here? If the angle theta, which is here, was originally 45 degrees before the weights were added, so in order, in, before the weights were added, these were in even farther, right? Which would have, whoop, drawn those weights up a little bit. Uh, find the weight of each block. So it was 45 degrees when it started, and now that the weights have been added, this is the new configuration. Uh, find the weight of each block. Now, first thing I recognize with this problem is, this thing is completely symmetric. So whatever's going on on the left half will be going on on the right half, right? So I only have to solve half this problem, and I think I can do the whole thing, okay? So what I want to look at, now what do we know, hey, we're pretty smart here, aren't we? What do we know about a weight going around a pulley, right? That the tension on this side of the pulley is the same as the tension on that side of the pulley, right? Those two are going to be equal to each other. We know that. It's a frictionless pulley. So really, if this is W, then the force in this cable here is also W, isn't it? So we start off by drawing a free body diagram, just like every good statics problem, right? of joint B. Let's do joint B. You can do joint E, same exact thing, but we're going to do B, okay? Now, if you're smart, pause the video and work it along with me. Skip the end, see if you get the same answer I do, but let's go, okay? Joint B. What's going on, joint B? Well, I've got cables attached to me, and I know that cables can only pull. Okay, I'm going to call this guy FS for force of the spring. I'm going to call this guy W, we just talked about that, right? And I'll call that guy, I don't know, FBA. Okay? Now, can we come up with some angles? Would that be okay? Okay? Now, the A is in the same line as C, right? So this uh, little triangle right here is 12 by 8, which means my current angle theta, my current angle theta, right, is, I could use tangent, right? Tan theta equals opposite zoop, over adjacent, 12 over 8. All right, let's see what that is. 12 divided, clear, clear, 12 divided by 8 is 1.5, and then the inverse tan of that is 56.3 degrees. So theta is currently 56.3 degrees, okay? So that is... This angle here, 56.3 degrees, right? What about this angle right here? What is that guy? I might need to know that. Well, let's see, this side's 16, that side's still eight. So that's two, right? So tan theta, tan 
equals 16 over 8. Here we go. So inverse tan of 2 is 63.43 degrees. So this theta, not theta. Let's call him, call him something different, please. Okay, he's alpha. He's smudged now. 63.4 degrees. Okay, so this guy right here is 63.4 degrees. Okay. Still, this is a 2D problem. I have two equations, the force in the X and the force in the Y, but I have one, two, I have three unknowns. That's ungood. Maybe we can use this information right here to determine what the original length of the spring was, okay? So before the weights were added, this angle theta was 45 degrees. Now, will this 12 inch length here change? The answer to that question is yes, it will, because as this spring retracts, right, this length here, this is the only thing from D to E or from A to B that won't change, right? But this is gonna rotate upwards. So 12 is gonna get shorter, right? And this length down here, this eight, right, is gonna get longer. But what won't change is the length of that hypotenuse. Can we find that out right quick? How about this? Eight squared plus 12 squared, the square root would equal that hypotenuse, wouldn't it? Because what we're talking about, we're getting a new triangle here that looks like this. This is that hypotenuse, right? Which, which the length will not change. And this angle is 45 degrees. Because what I want to know is what is this new length down here? That's what I want to know. So let's see. A, oh, clear again. 8 squared plus 12 squared equals square root of that equals 14.42. Oh, okay. So the hypotenuse is 14.42. That doesn't, that's, that's not going to change. That length there, or that length there, as this rotates, will not change. Okay, so what is this length down here? Let's see, I know the angle, I need the adjacent side, I know the apart, that's cosine, isn't it? Cosine of 45 is equal to adjacent, which is what I'm looking for, divided by hypotenuse, which is 14.42. So x is equal to times 0 0.707 equals... 10.2, okay? So this length, when it's 45 degrees, is 10.2 inches, okay? Well, if that's 10.2, it started out at eight, so how much did, it, did the spring retract just on this half over here? Let's see. It went from, it went from eight to 10.2, so how about 2.2 inches? So the spring came in 2.2 inches over here. Ooh, and 2.2 inches on that side. So the spring stretch was a total of 4.4 inches. You getting that? Okay. 2.2 from this side, 2.2 from that side, which is 4.4 inches. That is the stretch in the spring, okay? Now we know the spring constant. Okay, here you go, pitfall of the day. Watch out for this, gang. These problems will give you the spring constant, like in inches, and then give you all the measurements in the problem in feet. Watch out for mixed units. Or in newtons over meters, and then give you all the dimensions in millimeters. Watch for, don't, don't fall for that trap, okay? Okay, so x equals 4.4 inches. Let's use this equation to come up with the force in that spring. So f is equal to k. Now this one doesn't have mixed units, does it? 100 pounds per inch times 4.4 inches equals, I got it, 440 pounds, okay? So that is the force in the spring, okay? 440 pounds, okay? You got to be careful on that, man. That's, that's tricky. You know, you might say, oh, that 12 never changes, so this guy goes to 12 when it's 45. But it doesn't. That, that length there is the only thing that remains constant. Be careful about that. I hope you followed that, okay, where all that came from. Okay, now that I know this, now what do I have? I got the world's simplest statics problem here from last chapter, right? We should be able to solve this, right? Some of the forces in the x equals zero. What do I have in the x direction? 
Well, I've got 440, okay? And then I've got minus FBA, what? Cosine 56.3, right? I'm erasing this, okay? That was my hypotenuse. Minus the cosine of this one, got this guy here, W cosine 63.4 degrees, okay? There's one equation. Now let me just let me just rewrite that equation. I'm gonna take these two negatives, move them to the other side. I'm gonna get this. FBA cos 56.3 plus W cos 63.4 equals 440. Okay? Just rearrange that equation. You know why? Because this equation has two unknowns. I bet my y equation is gonna have two unknowns in it, which is a perfect job for my system solver. You could use the substitution method in a little bit of algebra, but you know, when you got a calculator that'll do it and it doesn't make algebra mistakes, that would be, would kind of be silly to do, wouldn't it? Okay, so the, the last equation is this guy. I've got FBA going uphill times the sine of 56.3, okay? Yeah, just remember, these guys have components here and here and here. And there, that's what we're doing, is we're, we're adding those components up, right? So plus W sine, oh, not plus. He's going downhill. That's a minus. Oh, Dr. Hansen, you almost messed that up. Okay, 63.4 equals nothing else in the Y, so a big fat zero, okay? So again, I have written, I've got my two equations here, and I have written them in columns. So I have this column. And then I have this column, okay? This is unknown number one, unknown number two, and then constants over there, which is exactly how my TI-36 Pro system solver wants it set up. So I'm gonna go second, system solve, two by two, click, and then I'm gonna enter in cosine of 56.3, cosine 56.3, enter, okay, you can just enter the function in, minus, Minus, what am I gonna put? No, plus, that's not minus, that's plus. Plus, cosine 63.4, cosine 63.4, enter. And then over here, I'm gonna put my 440, 440, enter. Okay, and then on the next line down, sine 56.3, enter, minus, and then sine, 63.4, enter, zero, enter. And then just click solve, bam! And it gives you the answers, doesn't it? FBA, which is X in my calculator, is 452.9 pounds. And W, which is Y in my calculator, right, is 421.4 pounds, okay? And that is how you do that, right? So the hardest part about this was taking this force in the spring, which was actually given to us, but just in a really weird way, right? We had to do a little bit of, a little bit of geometry to come up with the stretch in the spring and multiply by the spring constant to get that force. Now, here's a question for you. Do I take this W do I divide that by two and like that's half of it and that's half of it? No. This W is 421.4. That W, 421.4, okay? I hope you don't mess that up. All right, I hope this helps and I'll see you on the next lesson.